even though the term enclosure is associated with the English enclosure movement, which took place mostly between the 16th and 19th centuries, the dynamics of enclosure are worldwide and contemporary. They are key features of modern capitalism. The history of enclosure is valuable to look at because it reveals quite clearly how it all works. At various times in medieval history and early modern history, the king, aristocracy, and landed gentry simply claimed forests, pastures, wild game, and waterways for themselves. Commoners had traditionally used them to meet their everyday needs, but that didn't count for much. Early capitalists simply used their money and political influence to seize common wealth, especially land. They blamed commoners and indigenous peoples for being lazy and not improving their land, by which they meant they weren't making private profits off of them in capitalist markets. Sometimes rich people seized lands with the formal approval of parliament in an attempt to make it look legal. Sometimes they just took common assets by force, hired thugs, police, armies. Then the wealthy built hedges and fences to prevent commoners from returning to their common land. Sheriffs and gangs made sure that no commoner took wild game from the king's land, for example. When women, as providers for their households, insisted on using the commons, they were vilified and persecuted as witches. For the richest 1% of medieval England, enclosure was irresistible. It was a cheap and easy way to grab more wealth and power, usually with the full support of the state. Ambitious barons and lords could consolidate and extend their political power. But as enclosure swept the villages of England, commoners suffered serious hardships. They, they couldn't any longer gather firewood from the forest or find wood to thatch the roofs. They couldn't grow vegetables on their share, shared fields. They couldn't gather fruits and berries from open fields. You have to realize that the entire rural economy was based on people having access to the commons. So once their commons were destroyed, villagers migrated to cities where the emerging industrial revolution turned them into wage slaves, if they were lucky, and otherwise into beggars and paupers. Charles Dickens's novels about London's underclass were the stories of former commoners trying to make it in the new capitalist order. One important goal of all enclosures has been to transform commoners into creatures of the market. They're forced to abandon their collective interests and become self-centered individuals responsible for their own fate. Early industrialists promoted this ethic because they needed obedient, desperate workers for their factories and coal mines. And so began a great concentration of power and social inequality that persists to this day. During the course of 150 years from the late 1600s to the mid-1800s, one-seventh of all English common land was carved up and privatized. This created the modern market order and social hierarchies that persist to this day. In this new world, there would be no need for the commons, just the need for compliant individuals, private property, and so-called free markets. Karl Polanyi was an economic historian who studied this unique transition in human history, the decline of commons and the rise of markets and enclosures. In his underappreciated 1944 classic, the Great Transformation, Bologna noted that for millennia, people had been bound together through community, religion, kinship, and other cooperative ties. All economic systems had been based on systems of social reciprocity, redistribution, and householding. Bologna characterized the history of enclosure as a revolution of the rich against the poor, quote, Quote, the lords and nobles were upsetting the social order, he wrote, breaking down the ancient laws and customs, sometimes by means of violence and often by pressure and intimidation, end quote. Production and profit became the central organizing principles of society. Instead of focusing on the needs of households, production became something to be done uh, to earn money. The point was to produce returns on capital. This, retur this required that land, labor, and money be redefined as commodities, even though, of course, human life and natural ecosystems are not commodities. Life and land really can't be divided up into neat packages of property, 
because they're all embedded in a larger web of living systems. That's why Polonia called land, labor, and money fictional commodities, something that capital invented, capitalism invented for its own purposes. When the living systems are regarded as mere commodities, that's the beginning of the end of commons, because the capitalist market machine wants to treat everything as a saleable object, to define everything as property and to value it through market price. 